Once when I was five, I was at the grocery store when suddenly I heard loud voices behind me. A mean looking woman was screaming at my sister Nancy for taking the last toilet roll. Oh no, I knew what was coming next. Don't you shout at her, you witch! She's gonna faint! I caught Nancy just before she hit the ground. The woman looked shocked and someone started calling an ambulance. Don't worry, I can take care of this. And with that, I started rocking Nancy and singing in a calm voice. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, you're a dummy, yes you are. Everyone was looking at me like I was crazy, but Nancy opened her eyes soon. I helped her get up and as we were leaving, I stomped on the woman's foot. Hi, my name is Mira and I was born 15 years after my sister Nancy. And ever since I can remember, Nancy's had this crazy problem called cataplexy. Every time she's really angry or stressed, she faints. One time, a bully in the park pushed me off the swing, and as Nancy stepped forward to yell at her, she just fainted on top of her. I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing as the girl screamed till her parents came to her rescue. Mom worked as a maid, and we were poor, but we were happy together. I was especially close to Nancy because she always had my back, and I had hers. Soon after I'd passed eighth grade, Nancy came home with some great news one day. She'd been hired as a teacher in a private school, and I could attend it for free. I was <gasps> awestruck on my first day there. Everything and everyone was so fancy. When the bell rang for recess, a girl named Lexi shrieked. OMG, let's go outside. My parents must be here with my birthday present. And she and her minions rudely pushed me aside on their way out. I followed them out of curiosity, and my jaw dropped when I saw a pink sports car drive up and her parents jumped out. But suddenly, Lexi went ballistic. Are you kidding me, Daddy? A Mercedes? My name is freaking Lexi, and I wanted a freaking Lexus with a number plate saying Lexi. Are you guys morons? You're ruining my life. And then she started pulling her dad's hair and he started crying and apologizing. Gosh, what planet were these people from? Well, now I was on the planet of jerks too, and Lexi was the president. One day in class, the teacher was testing out our mental math skills and asked, what's the probability of rolling an even number on a dice? Lexi's hand instantly shot up. I don't know, but it's definitely higher than the probability of you ever finding a boyfriend. Loser. As the teacher's face turned red, I felt terrible. Hey, that's really rude. Didn't anyone teach you any manners? The class fell silent, and Lexi stared at me like I'd killed her cat. You think I can't tell how poor you are? Someone like you shouldn't be messing with someone like me. That was stupid times infinity. After that, she made it her life's mission to make me miserable. I'd find stinky tuna in my locker, orange juice all over my notebooks, my bag in the toilet. And even though I was doing great at school and the teachers loved me, no one dared say anything to Lexi because her parents were big donors. But then she went too far. One day I was having lunch when Lexi came over and she climbed onto the table and kicked my plate away. Kiss my shoes, loser and I'll make you part of my gang. We could use a nerd to do our homework. I'd had enough. I got up to kick her butt when suddenly Nancy walked in and pulled her down. What do you think you're doing? Stay away from my sister. Sister? Wow, I do see the resemblance actually. You both look like some homeless people let you borrow their clothes. Nancy looked furious. And next thing I knew, she'd fainted smack onto Lexi with her food tray. Lexi went mental and stormed off straight to the principal. That teacher attacked me, and she ruined my limited edition Gucci dress. I'll report her to the police. She has a health issue, you psycho. She didn't do it on purpose. I want her fired. Even though the principal was sympathetic, she said she had to let Nancy go. But since I was a good student, she'd let me stay on scholarship. I was so furious. I decided I was gonna leave anyway, but Nancy wouldn't hear it. You have a chance to get a great college scholarship if you study here, Mira. I'm sorry I made things worse for you, but you have to go. With Nancy losing her job, 
I knew money would be tight again, and I didn't want her and mom worrying. So I found a tutor's job and started teaching math to a couple of super spoiled brats. One evening when I was leaving their house, their snooty mom handed me a bag of trash and a large painting. Someone gave me this but ugly painting as a gift. Be a dear and throw this on your way out. God, why were rich people so awful? She didn't even say please. I shoved the stuff in the garbage dump, but then I turned around and picked up the painting. Nancy would probably like it, but I wasn't expecting her reaction when she saw it. This artist is really famous, and it looks like an original. She asked you to throw it away? We took it to an art gallery the next day, and the owner confirmed that it was an original. He told us to sell it at an upcoming auction, and we did. As the number went higher and higher, Nancy fainted. It was finally sold to the highest bidder for freaking $2 million. What? We went into complete shock for a minute, and then we started hugging and dancing for joy. We were rich from some rich idiot's trash. And just like that, our lives changed. We moved into a better apartment immediately and decided to spoil ourselves a little. The three of us went on a shopping spree, got spa treatments and makeovers, had a few fancy dinners. We had a blast. And when I walked into school after the weekend, I could instantly feel all eyes on me. As I put my stuff away in the locker, I closed the door to find Lexi standing behind it like a creep. And then I saw we were wearing the exact same outfit. You have to take your clothes off. What? How can you even afford this? And no one is allowed to wear the same clothes to school as me. Now, just take these gym clothes and go change. Lexi, you can bully your friends and parents and teachers to get your way, but it's never going to happen with me. Like, ever. To make things even better, someone posted a picture of us and started an Instagram poll of who wore it better, and the majority voted for me. When Lexi saw that, she snatched all of her friends' phones and smashed them into the wall one by one. And just like that, a war had started between us. I already had better grades, and now I had just as many friends and boys around me. One time at a big football match, Lexi was busy flirting with all the jocks, but the minute I sat down on the bleachers, the whole team came running towards me. I'll be playing for you today, Mira. Don't miss my moves out there, babe. That was weird, but it seemed to be making Lexi livid. So I blew them all kisses and said I'd be cheering them on. And when they won, they literally carried me off on their shoulders to the celebration party. But the final straw was when the student council elections came around. Usually, no one even bothered to stand against Lexi as president. But I decided to run, and I won by a freaking landslide. This is not possible. I want to recount. I smell foul play. Lexi, it's about time you understood that people might fear you, but they'd rather vote for someone they actually like, and that's not you. I won fair and square, so deal with it. Well, she did deal with it. In a way, I didn't see coming. I'd been working for months with my teacher on a math research paper for a university competition. Winning it could get me a full scholarship after high school. So when my teacher called me one evening to say that I'd won first prize, I fell off my chair at the dining table. Mom and Nancy were so proud of me. But when I went to the principal's office to meet the university dean, I was shocked to find Lexi there with her parents. What are you doing here, Lexi? What are you doing here, Mira? I'm here to talk more about the prize and scholarship I just won. I looked around at everyone in shock, and then I just snapped. Oh my god, you mean the scholarship you just bought with mommy and daddy's money? Because you sure as heck aren't smart enough to win anything. Lexi snarled and attacked me, pushed me straight onto the principal's desk. I grabbed a bottle of ink and flung it into her eyes. As the principal screamed and Lexi's parents tried to stop her, she just kicked them. When the grown-ups finally managed to pull us apart, the principal was furious. That's it. I don't care how much you donate, sir. One more incident like this and Lexi will be expelled. And with that, she pushed us all out. As I was about to storm off angrily, I turned to Lexi's parents. You guys have raised a monster. Can't you see she has no respect for anything or anyone? Not even you? 
You can buy her everything she wants, and she's never going to love you or thank you for it. For the next few days, I pretended like Lexi didn't even exist. And then, she didn't come to school for a week. No one was happier than me. But one night, Nancy and I were driving through her neighborhood when we crossed her house, and it seemed pitch dark. Had she left town? I asked Nancy to stop for a minute, and I walked up to the house to look through a window. I found Lexi sitting with her parents on the floor, eating with candles on. There was no furniture. What was going on? I can't even see what garbage I'm eating. How can we not have any electricity? This is what it means to be broke, Lexi. We can't pay for things. Ugh, oh, I hate you, Dad. I can't live like this. I wish I'd never been born to a loser like you. It's not my fault the market crashed. You want me to put you up for adoption? That girl Mira was right. You're awful. I sneaked away from her house, feeling super weird. Lexi was poor now? The next day at school, I saw Lexi was back, but she was cornered by the other girls from class. Is it true, Lexi? The paper said, your dad is totally broke. Are you too poor to afford shampoo now? Your hair looks like it hasn't been washed in a week. Gross. I was about to walk away, but something about Lexi's tear-stained face made me stop, and I pushed through them. Can everyone please, for once, stop being a big jerk around here? You don't have to punch somebody when they're already down. With that, I took Lexi's hand and led her away from the rest. She wiped away her tears and stared at me in shock. Why did you do that? Why would you help me? You certainly don't deserve it, but it was the right thing to do. I don't think someone as heartless as you would really understand that. That was the last I ever spoke to Lexi. Her locker was cleared up soon after, and she and her parents left town for good. But I got a call the very next day from the university dean, offering me the scholarship again. No thank you, sir. I've lost all respect for you and your university, because anyone could buy you if they had enough money. And two years later, I'm graduating high school with honors and going off to my dream university.